this is actually something I've focused a lot on the past few years uh, as part of VPUX as well, which is one of the largest insure tax in Europe. Um, so now to answer that question, um, India traditionally has, uh, is a country with very low insurance coverage. And this is mostly because we always counterweigh the cost of insurance against the benefits and saying, maybe I don't need that, maybe I don't need to pay that money. Uh, take for example, healthcare. It should not be surprising to us that uh, a majority of the population is not covered by a dedicated health insurance. In fact, most employees still use the insurance provided by the employers. I and mean, this is not surprising. And me too, at some point of time, had only the insurance provided by my company. I didn't have any other insurance. Uh, but most countries, if you look at it, developed nations, they, uh, they have mandatory health insurance that has to be taken. Uh, so the short answer to this is that, yes, when they counterweigh the cost versus benefit, uh, uh, there's going to be a mind shift and people are going to definitely appreciate paying that money for the insurance, for the benefit that it brings. But all is not bad. I mean, one of the best things I want to highlight, especially in terms of India, is we are surprisingly digitized when it comes to insurance. And this is a very, very positive thing. Take, uh, you know, any kind of insurance that you can think of, you can go to Policy Bazaar or any other aggregate sites and actually have that insurance 100% digitized and available to us in just a matter of one or two days. And this is not something that a lot of developed countries do not have right now. In fact, uh, when I was working with VFOX, we had this major challenge in Switzerland and even in Germany, where most of the regular life and health insurances have to be still done by the traditional document way where people have to sign it up, send it to you, you scan it, you try to digitize the document. So overall, we have an ecosystem which is surprisingly digital, and this is a great thing, but we don't have as much coverage. And my feeling is that uh, under the current circumstances, this would change as people would appreciate insurance and the benefits more and more. Thank you. Counting of some sort or the other. Uh, now that, that goes down and that goes back to the heart of that company and that brand. If that brand is built along a value chain which can support discounting, great. That's the way for them. But not all are, right? Now, if you move down to this situation and uh, you see brand using that as a tool to get more people in to order, um, I think, like I said earlier, you know, this, the next six months is going to be extremely ugly, right? So there is no, so there, there is unfortunately no playbook that at least the food companies are used to, right? Uh, the food companies are used to a playbook of an economic recession that they know how to handle. Uh, but they do not know how to handle both the supply side shock as well as demand side shock. I think that is something that is going to be ugly. There are going to be some very interesting business models that are going to uh, uh, that are going to uh, sort of emerge out of this. And whether discounting is something that supports them in the short term, so be it. So uh, I'll answer the second one first. So uh, it's not about replacing. Obviously, digital will be number two, and print will be number three, uh, number two, or number three, or TV will be number two. So it's very critical to understand that they all will work together, right? You cannot just survive on one. So I, I'm not saying that we can only survive on TV or a print or a digital. There needs to be a combination on both. So that's really important. To answer the first question is uh, premium of OTT is already started. I read in the news today. In one of the newspaper that there are the I mean how many people will because cinema industry is going to be impacted the most right because I don't have a I have a choice not to go and last 30 days 70 days we are at home 60 days and we are in our own comfort watching movie on Netflix on on our own screen why should I take risk myself and go out so and that's exactly what all the cinema guys are also realizing and that's the reason there is uh, premium of OTT movies on OTT has also started. So there will be a combination going forward in future that we will be premium on OTT as well as in movie cinemas. The travel industry has taken the, uh, I mean, among all the industries, it's taken a humongous uh, hit across. Uh, one of the dynamics that we are not clear yet is you know, um, we had requests where a customer has to travel to a two or three city. 
but the you know the driver goes till there and but the villagers wouldn't allow them to come in so how do you how do you actually understand the whole dynamics you know what's happening out over there so uh, the uh, the critical factor is understanding the ground reality what is happening in tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities as we speak the lockdown is getting extended the new uh, you know policies are coming in understanding what's happening so uh, it the uh, demand is very low the demand which is we are i mean the request that we are coming is only for an emergency or somebody wants to move from one location to another so during these times it's very very critical to understand what these requests are and can we adhere to it or not to understand that uh, the information we don't have too much information to know even if the tier 3 city would allow the you know the customer to get dropped out over there or not so you have to understand the whole dynamics of it right from the point we pick the passing uh, the customer to where he gets you know dropped the travel industry is going to take a bigger hit in the future even uh, beat in the airlines you know where we have three seats we are loving only you know two of them with certain distance out over there beat in buses and even in the cars we are not going to allow more than three people max in the future and uh, with certain restrictions out over there and if it is a longer distance you know would the same passing would the same car be allowed uh, traveling 1000 kilometers would that be okay or should something come around there and you know and covid is you know there's so much speculation around over there that there's going to be uh, uh, you know the next round or we don't know what uh, few things are going to add her so what are few uh, you know uh, 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 pro pro uh, processes that we got to implement i would say methods and procedures that we got to implement even though god forbid and it happens what are few things that we make it as a norm in the travel industry per se because uh, uh, we can't stop it all of we can't go to ground zero again there has to be certain things that we have to come out be more innovative construct in such a way so that when a trip uh, when somebody when you get a request can we adhere to the request or not get all the information together understand the red zone green zones orange zones understand the consumer understand the other uh, understand the dynamics of the driver can we send them together so all hope the end to end spectrum of getting every vertical every user every information is very important to make a decision right. yes it is going to um, you will see a lot of changes coming in but uh, it has to move on